These dogs are clones. That's right, there's two of them, but they're genetically 100% the same dog. I love my dog, but she lives at home with my parents, and I'm in college, so I never get to see her. But with this technology, apparently it's actually possible to clone your pet. So I guess she could be in two places at once. To find out, I've traveled to the world's center of cloning technology, which is apparently Texas. I don't know what to expect. I feel like I'm entering a science fiction movie, except it's real, and I'm here right now. Hi, it's nice to meet you. I came here to answer one simple question. Should I clone my dog? This dog's name is Vader, and she's a clone. Basically, there was an original dog, and when that dog got cloned, there was accidentally an extra that came out. So now they just had a third dog, they didn't know what to do with. So Lauren, who works for Viagen, adopted her. When we share pictures, it is just stunning how absolutely identical they are. But how does this even work? So this is where the viable cells are preserved and frozen and stored. These vials, just to show you one rack in here, stay indefinitely. So that's step one freezing the cells. I'm as confused as you are. Let me explain. They get your pet cells by having you mail it to them, and then they can freeze it for as long as you'd like. Whenever you're ready, you can let them know when you want to move on to step two, cloning. And so those are the cells in that red liquid. Right, and the cells can remain in these vials indefinitely. Why does she keep saying indefinitely? Indefinitely means forever. I thought cloning was like a new thing. Well, apparently it's not. Because scientists in the 1970s were already storing cells in these tanks of endangered species. Because they knew the technology would become available eventually to keep them from going extinct. So some of the animals that are cloning have been stored here waiting to be brought back for like 50 years. It almost seems like technically like no species ever really has to go extinct. If you just kind of clone them a bunch of times. If they still have some left because you want to transfer into the same species surrogate. Oh yeah, so that's step three, the clone is born. Viagen basically has to transfer these cells to a surrogate mother to birth the clone. A surrogate is just a mother for a baby that isn't theirs. We'll meet some of those clone mothers later. But it also means that there still has to be some of those animals around to be the clone mother. So we can't just bring back species who have already gone extinct. Jurassic Park, right. not happening, I'm yeah. guessing. And also the, the DNA would be too old, right? So, uh, this technology's got so many tricks up its sleeve, we'll just leave it at Jurassic Park. Not happening for now. What's the most amount of times you've seen the same dog get cloned? For that, it's, it wasn't in a family circumstance. It was more for, like, the police work. This is Cody, their client service representative. We do have someone that is um, cloning for hunting dogs. This wasn't necessarily the intent with cloning, but canine tactical. He has trained his dogs to be, like, a shooter response. They've had a lot of their more industrial clients clone their optimal animals for work purposes, but most of their customers are just cloning their pets. Most of our clients will just do the DNA preservation, like with not even necessarily the intention of cloning. They just, you know, say it makes them feel so much better just knowing that they have that option and kind of keeping that hope alive that one day maybe they could if they really wanted to. Interesting. So, okay, let's review. Step one is freezing the cell, which she's calling DNA preservation. They'll store the cells frozen for as long as you'd like until you're ready for step two, actually cloning them with the surrogate mother, which leads to step three, the clone is born. That was an interesting morning. I'm meeting up with a girl here in a minute at this park who paid the money to have her cat cloned. So she's been living with this new cat for at least a year now. And I'm very curious about how her relationship with that cat is different from the one she had with the first. Hi, nice to meet you. Oh, wow. Yeah, it even I says did, the cloned kitty right does. there. I brought her, but I'm gonna keep her zipped up. My name is Kelly and I cloned my cat. Chai was my soulmate cat. She was the cat that I cloned I got found from her. How long after Chai died did you decide to do it? Or was this during I Chai's life? I decided the night that Chai died that wow. I was going to clone her, yeah. Do cloned animals grow up to be like exactly the same as the original? My original cat Chai was very sick as a kitten. And so that really shaped her personality. And Belle, she's outgoing, curious, I take her places. They're just very different. Is it still just sort of as satisfying as you were hoping it would be? If they don't really feel like the same cat in personality, does it still have the same effect sort of emotionally? I never really wanted to bring her back to life. I just wanted to carry on a piece of her. Kelly had to wait four years in between Chai's death and Belle's birth, where Viagen tried to successfully clone her. They kind of stopped calling, you know, after a while because I think they knew that I was upset. It was hard. After about two years, I kind of turned my emotions off. When they did call me eventually, of course I'm over the moon about it. I started to think, like, I love my dog, you know? And I was thinking, like, 
So I do that. I'm gonna fly to Dallas to meet with the CEO of the company, Blake Russell. He should know the answers to all the serious ethical questions and where the future of this technology can go. He runs a horse ranch where he's got tons of the same horse. There's probably no one in the world that's more passionate about this than him. So if anyone's gonna convince me, it's gonna be Blake. I really had no idea what I was getting myself into. <laughs> Hotel lobby for giving out chocolate chip cookies tonight. That is what I needed. I already ate it though. I was in Dallas all day, but Blake told me to meet him at his cloned horse ranch at night. This is like a horror movie. Is this it? Yes. All right. Thank you very much for the ride. I know it was a long drive. Best luck for you. Thank you. I've arrived at Blake's house where he keeps the cloned horses. He's not here yet. He told me to just let myself in. So, I'm in his house right now. I am in a cloner's house. <laughs> Should we do a house tour? Bedroom. Closet. Dishwasher. Shower. Texas themed lamp. Another closet. Boot. What does a cloning scientist keep in the fridge? Human remains? No. I've never met Blake, but I met all his employees yesterday and they were super nice. But a cloning scientist is a strange job title. I mean, you have to admit, I could be the first cloned human by next Tuesday if he decides he wants me to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, why does this house look like nobody's ever lived in it? Like, th there's nothing. Other than this organized pile of snacks right here, which might have a booby trap? No. And I still have to decide if I'm going to clone my own dog. I just got a text from Blake. Pulling in. Oh man, I am so sorry. No, it's all good. You ready to come out here to the barn? Yeah. Hey, clone baby, this baby will go to Europe. That's an Olympic level show jumper. Most horses don't get cloned as pets, but as great athletes. So they can live on and keep competing in horse sports after the original has died. And that bigger horse standing next to the baby is the surrogate mother we talked about earlier. The mother and the baby aren't related at all, which is why they don't look the same. The mother's just there to give birth to the clone. That's what a surrogate mother does. This is just a normal dog, just not a, a, not dog, a clone. Yeah. <laughs> this baby is not a clone but her mother is a clone and her father is a clone. Huh. Petting horse is a Western sport. Well, the number one producer of those type of horses in history, her name was Royal Blue Boone. Our family owns a clone of Royal Blue Boone. And this baby, her mother is the clone of Royal Blue Boone. She's a, a miracle of science in that both her genetic father and genetic mother were brilliant and amazing. They're in the Hall of Fame. They were never mated together when they were both living originally, but now the clones, we can put, bring those, sorry, that's my wife. She's feeding the cats. All good. Um, so this work here is for the San Diego Zoo, it's called the Shabalski. Yeah, I heard about that. He's from a Shabalski horse that died over 50 years ago. So this horse is part of one of the endangered <laughs> species Viagen is trying to prevent from extinction. In this case, the last breed of wild horses left in the world. Galloping through the pasture at Viagen's cloning facility in Texas, the second cloned Shabalski horse is giving hope to restoring genetic diversity. So he's an identical twin to a horse from 50 years ago. And this was, for the first time, when Blake showed me two cloned horses side by side. Why? There's the puppies that she gave birth to. Oh, the dog we were looking at earlier. I have a really special dog that was um, in my family when my girls were growing up. He passed away when he was 18, but he's also stored at that gene bank that you were in yesterday with a dream that we have of when we retire and settle down, cloning him. So again, our grandchildren can be around him like our own girls were around the original back when they were young and growing up. What about people who would say like, you know, Na it's going against nature. It almost feels like it's breaking the circle of life a little bit. Every animal that we see today that's in domestication is the result of human intervention. This is just a very sophisticated way of doing that. Our business, we don't talk about cloning humans, we don't think about cloning humans. Um, the theme of the video is sort of like, I wanted to kind of come in and ask you this. For me, 
right? Coming here, I thought there was no way I would ever clone my dog. You know, they're like, that. that's crazy, it's so expensive. Do you think it would be something that, like, like if you, like, do you think it's something I, would, I should do? I think of $50,000 is a tremendous amount of money, right? But it is the price of a new pickup. Yeah. And one day I'll buy another new pickup, right? But I could probably put it off for four or five years and drive the old pickup yeah. and clone that dog. And when I hear that story from people, they tell me that pickup never loved me back the way that clone dog did. Blake offered to drive me back to Dallas. At this point, he asked me what I was actually doing there, and I told him how YouTube works and who Mr. Beast is. I appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for the ride. So, what's my decision? Should I get some cells from my dog to send into the lab to be frozen forever in case I ever decide to get a clone? Or should I just pull the trigger and get a new Georgia for me to enjoy on my own? Or should I let the circle of life run its course? Luckily, I think I've got some time to decide.